Party people, Kyle here, and I want to touch on SVG optimization again. This presentation is a response to all of the responses that I got from my last video. It's entitled The End All Be All Edition. Uh, I would never be so bold, but it does have a good bit of information that you could find useful. If you haven't already, check out my first video. Um, it is on the YouTubes. And read Chris Corrier's article on CSS tricks um, regarding using SVGs. It has a ton of information, covers a lot of ground, um, and it features me. So that's kind of cool. The many workflow suggestions uh, that I received as a result of my last video, um, out of all of those, these are the top three that I kept coming back to. The first is to use Sublime Text 2's join shortcut. Uh, the second is to base 64 inside the terminal instead of using Mobile Fish's um, online tool. And then also, everybody kept telling me about SVGO um, and said, hey, you should check it out. It's better than SVG Optimizer. So I did. I'm going to show you how to do all these various things, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts real quick. The first is Sublime Text 2's join shortcut, and it is seriously just Command-J. So if we're going into our project, let's open up our logo.svg within Sublime Text 2. Let's say we've reached the point um, within our workflow that we want to remove new lines, uh, spaces, that sort of stuff. Get real OCD with it. All we have to do is select everything and hit Command J. And you will notice it removes all the superfluous space that was there before. You will notice, however, that a lot of the opening and closing brackets have spaces between them, but that's a simple find and replace. And we're left with a solid mass of gibberish that is ultra optimized, and if that's how you like it, this is the quickest way to do it. The next bit I want to talk about is a little shell script or um, script within the terminal for base64 encoding. Um, the top two that I kept coming back to um, are the ones that you see on your screen. Uh, most specifically, the one on the top. It makes the most sense to me and works the best in my workflow. So let's go over that real quick, shall we? Let's open up Terminal and open SSL base64 less than. And in order to do the uh, path to the file, all you have to do is drag and drop. The next bit here gets rid of your new lines automatically, which further streamlines the process. And then PB copy uh, copies it to the pasteboard. So that all you have to do, once you hit enter, is go over into your project, data, image, SVG plus XML, base64, comma. All you got to do is paste it. Pretty efficient, wouldn't you say? However, having said that, I think I found an even more efficient method. And that involves using Emmet in Sublime Text 2. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Emmet, it is a toolkit. It used to be called Zen Coding. And it's a plug-in for all the major um, text editors out there to help optimize your workflow and to provide you with shortcuts for doing stuff that you do every day. What I really want to focus in on is the encode slash decode uh, image to a data URI um, shortcut that it provides. Now I've installed it on Sublime Text 2 um, and it's as simple as follows. You go to our project and you will notice that our SVG is within our image folder. So we're going to declare our background URL just like we would any other time. We're going to go image logo.svg. And once you've done that, all you have to do is place your care anywhere within this URL and then hit Control Shift D. And bada bing, bada boom, we have one base64 encoded SVG. So yeah, if you have, uh, if your workflow encompasses a text editor that um, Emmet supports, I highly recommend that you go ahead and uh, download it, install it, 
and use it every single day. Let's go back to our presentation and let's talk about um, SVG optimization breakdowns. You'll notice that I have linked up um, a pin on code pin that is very very complicated uh, in that it gives you a ton of information. Um, it basically encompasses the various methods to embed an SVG um, in a web page but it also steps you through the various methods of optimization. Um, I'm not going to go through all this because that would take forever. Um, I'm going to point you to it and suggest you dig in and see what you can find. I will say that the information in that pen um, and in a couple of other pens that I made are what led me to this next bit, which is from best to worst, SVGO is the best SVG optimizer out there uh, it, with, regarding file size. Then you've got SVG optimizer, hand optimization, uh, flattening within Illustrator, and then raw, which is you don't care, you didn't do any optimization within or outside of Illustrator. Um, and even though SVGO does provide the smallest file size, there are some caveats. And I can't really recommend it. Here's why. The first is a complicated install. If you're not familiar with command line uh, stuffs and you're not comfortable busting out the terminal, uh, it can be a little involved. I will say this though, uh, they finally got their GUI working. Uh, when I initially started testing it out, uh, their, the link to their GUI version wasn't working. It's working now, so if you are so inclined, go download it. Um, and it will make your life a lot easier. Uh, however, I think that the next three might turn you off, kind of like it did me. The first is that it optimizes everything. It removes superfluous markup, but then it goes and declares width and height instead of a view box, which is counterintuitive to the way that I deal with SVGs. Uh, it's a nitpick, yeah. You can go back in there, strip out the width and height, and then give it a view box, but it just doesn't really make much sense to me. The number three reason, and the top reason I cannot recommend it, is because it only works at original artboard dimensions, and it can't. as a result of that, it can't be resized via CSS. You'll notice in the pen here that on the SVGO row, the only ones that look good and work properly um, are inline and an image. So if you're doing a background, an embed, or an object, it's going to bork on you. Um, and the reason that it borks in this particular pen is because the artboard was originally 500 by 500. With CSS, I resized each of these to 150 by 150. And that kind of defeats the purpose of an SVG. If you can't resize it how you want to resize it, then it's not scalable. So my official recommendation is stick to SVG Optimizer. Uh, Peter Collingridge actually hit me up on YouTube and said that he's going to be updating it. So there you go. So let's finish up. The takeaway. Um, any optimization, even by hand, is better than no optimization at all. I think that goes without saying. But then also I want to suggest that you guys read and view um, as much content about it as you can and then just make a wise decision on what works best for you and your audience. I want to quickly point out that Raphael.js and GSAP plus SVG are boss as hell. Um, check out the links that I provided. If you're planning on animating SVGs, they are amazing. So there you go. You'll notice in the presentation that we have relevant links here, and I'm going to actually be linking this presentation to this video, and I suggest you check all this stuff out. And uh, yeah, that's about it. If you have any further questions, comments, uh, suggestions, Hit me up on all the social medias, and until next time, rock on.